You have probably already seen poll results. There's always a rather intriguing sentence stacked on to the end of the results, which goes in the line of, the results are accurate to within 2.2% 2 .2 19 times out of 20. This rolls into what are called confidence intervals, which is what this video is all about. We know that samples are used as surrogates when taking measurements on the entire population is impossible. So instead of working with parameters, we are estimating population values from statistics. The thing is, the statistic, which we can also call an estimator, is not always exactly the same as the population parameter. As you can see here, our sample mean is 10 hours, although the population mean is 9.5 hours. Now this begs the question, how good is my estimator or my statistic? How good is my sample? To answer this question, statisticians use interval estimates, which are ranges of values used to approximate a population parameter. The interval may or may not contain the value of the parameter being estimated. Of course, we hope that it is, but the essence of estimates implies that it might not be. In an interval estimate, the parameter is specified as being between two values. For example, an interval estimate for the age of students could be between 18 and 23 years old. We can also state this as being 20.5, which is the mean of 18 and 23, plus or minus 2.5, the difference between the mean and the values. As I said before, an interval may or may not contain the actual parameter. We can assign a degree of confidence or confidence level, which is the probability that the interval estimate will contain the parameter. Combined with the interval estimate, we end up with a confidence interval, which is a specific interval estimate of a parameter determined by using data obtained from a sample and by using the specific confidence level of the estimate. So here is the equation for defining confidence intervals. Let's take a closer look. If you take a few seconds, you might notice that you are familiar by now with almost all of the symbols in this equation. Indeed, we have first the population mean, then we have the standard error, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample n. The standard error is multiplied by z sub alpha over 2. Z sub alpha over 2 refers to the confidence level like so, where 1, the entire area under a sampling distribution, minus alpha gives us our confidence level. We can also say that 1, the entire area under distribution, minus the confidence level is equal to alpha. So how do we determine Z sub alpha over 2? Say we wish to determine a 95% confidence interval. Well, we know that the area under distribution is 1. A 95% confidence interval would span as so, meaning that our alpha would be of 1 minus 0.95 for 0 0.05. Now we must find the Z score associated to these limits, but you notice how the 5% remaining is split into two. So we have 2.5% on for each tail of our distribution. Now for the lower limit, we use the negative Z score table, locate point 0 0.025 and identify its associated Z score, which is minus 1.96. So our lower z-score is minus 1.96. We must now find the z-score that delimits the higher portion of the confidence interval, knowing that the area to the left of the z-score is 1 minus 2.5%, which is 97.5%. Because our limit is to the right of 0, we should use the positive z-score table. So we must first locate 0.9750, and then determine the corresponding z-score, which is positive 1.96. As such, our 95% confidence interval equation is this, with the population mean to which we add or subtract 1.96, remember that's our z sub alpha by 2, times the standard error. Another very often used confidence interval is the 90% confidence interval, with this equation here.
And the third most frequently used confidence interval is the 99% confidence interval with this equation here. You can pause the video and check out these values for yourself. So we can use the tables to determine the Z sub alpha over 2 for any confidence interval. Now definitely pause the video and try to find the equation for a 76.2% confidence interval. If you came up with this answer, then you are definitely on the right track. Confidence intervals can be used in two ways. First, we can determine an interval from the population mean within which sample means will be. So with this equation, we can say that 95% of sample means will fall within 1.96 standard errors of the population mean. Second, we can determine an interval from the sample mean within which the population mean should be. So we can say that 95% of probability that the population mean is within 1.96 standard errors of the sample mean. Here's a more applied example. You pick a random sample of 35 death certificates from a National Canadian Vital Statistics database and you find that the mean age of death from this sample is 79.5 years. The Canadian standard deviation for age of death is 9.3 years. Determine, with a 95% confidence interval, the estimate for the mean Canadian age of death. Now, we know that we can use this equation, which states that our population mean will be within 1.96 standard errors of our sample mean. So all we do is plug in the appropriate numbers and do the calculation. And our final interval is that the population mean of death will be between 76.42 years and 82.58 years old. Now it's your turn again. You have found a random sample of 30 houses sold in Sherbrooke in 2012 with a mean of $434,480. Knowing that the standard deviation for all houses sold in 2012 is of $176,950, find the 90% confidence interval for the population mean. The correct interval is $381,236 to $487,524.